Well, that screeching sound was supposed to be me interrupting my regular intro to play you some great full hall music, but I got hit with a YouTube ban for copyright issues. So go to my Patreon page. I'm going to make a playlist there of all these great full hall songs that we can enjoy during the Festa Junina time. For now, here's my regular intro. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey guys, and welcome to the Brazil Expat Journal, the BJ you can trust. I'm Phil, and I'll be your guide as we talk about life in general here in South America's biggest country. Today we're going to explore Festa Junina, or June Fest, Brazil's second most popular party behind Carnival. So I'll get into some of the history, traditions, games, foods, drinks, and I'll drop some links in the description for recipes and ways that you can enjoy the party from home. Now, I don't want to play too much of the music, so I'm not hit with the YouTube band. So, I'll be making a private playlist, which I'll post on my Patreon page, of Faux Hall songs that I like. In case you don't know, Faux Hall is the traditional music for Festa Junina. It comes up from the north, or the northeast, I should say. Now, the one song that I had to take out from the beginning was Dominguinhos's Eu Só Quero Um Xodó. Dominguinhos was a very, very famous Faux Hall singer. He popularized the music all throughout Brazil, so most people know a lot of his songs. Another guy that's very important, and I had to cut out his song too, is Luis Gonzaga. He's considered the king of the Bayon, which is another type of northeastern music, or even the king of Fajó also. And he popularized northeastern culture and music throughout Brazil. So this is where I would have played a little snippet of Asa Branca, but instead I'm going to go straight into what the song lyrics mean and what they represent for Brazil. Asa Branca translates as White Wing, and it's actually a pretty sad song, guys. It's about this guy who's there at the Festa de São João, which is another name for Festa Junina, the festival of St. John. And he's asking God up above, why do I have so much misery in my life? Because he lost his whole plantation. He lost all his cattle because of lack of rain. So he's there just miserable in the middle of this party. So then he takes his white wings and then he has to leave the outback, the Sertão, and goes and tries to make a life somewhere else. He's going to miss his little town and he's going to miss the people from this hometown. But he says, hold me in your heart because I got to take these white wings and go somewhere else in order to make a living, in order to survive. So that's the story of Asa Branca. And now let's talk a little bit of history of Festa Junina. Much like Carnival, it didn't start in Brazil. It actually came from Europe, and there are records of very similar type of festivals dating back as far as the 12th century. But what Festa Junina probably borrows the most from are the Midsummer Festivals, and we'll see why in just a little bit. Of course, when the Portuguese came over and colonized, they brought their traditions and their religions. The Jesuit priests especially went into the interior came into contact with indigenous folks. That's where you start to get a little bit of a mix of religious traditions because it is a religious festival at the end of the day. That's why another name for it, as I mentioned earlier, was Festa de São João, St. John's Festival. But there are two other saints that are celebrated during the Festa Junina. Saint Peter, São Pedro, and Saint Anthony, Santo Antonio. Saint Anthony is especially interesting because he's considered this patron saint of lost items, like he brings stuff back that you may have lost, but that kind of got translated into bringing back couples, reconciling couples. So here in Brazil, he's really connected to marriage. So one of the traditions here in the party is something called the casamento caipira, the country wedding. And usually the people at the party will enact a play where a couple will be getting married and the father of the bride will be there with a shotgun pointed at the groom and sometimes even the deputy of the town comes over and he also has a shotgun and it's supposed to be done as a comedy 
because the wife really or the girl really wants to get married to this guy but it goes into some superstition because there are people that will have a little icon of saint anthony and they'll tie him up they'll sink him in water they'll do a whole bunch of things just asking for the right man during the festa junina time so there are some religious connotations to festa junina and that's why if you go to different parties you may see that it's called the festa de são joão festa de são pedro festa de santo antonio but it's all part of the same thing some other popular traditions that came over from Europe and got a little bit changed are the tying of the rope around the pole. And that's very much related to the Maypole from the Midsummer Festival. We also have the bonfire, which also comes out of the Midsummer Festivals. Just that here there's a, there's a tradition of jumping over the fire. And some people believe that comes from indigenous traditions and it just kind of all got mixed up. Another thing that you see a lot in the June Fest is square dancing. And that comes out of Europe, actually probably taken from the French court where they did have this very stylized type of dancing. Just that, of course, you're in Brazil, so you have the African instruments. You have some indigenous instruments. So the beats and the rhythms are different, but it's still square dancing at the end of the day. So that's an overview of the general traditions and we'll get into some more of the specific games that people play a little bit later. But what is Festa Junina exactly and why do people celebrate it? In general, Festa Junina represents two things. One, it's a harvest festival. That's why you have so much food, it's corn and peanuts and things like that. But but also, Festa Junina marks the end of the rainy season, and São Pedro is considered the saint that controls the weather, so a lot of the party is to celebrate the fact that the rainy season is over, and now we have our crops and we can celebrate. In fact, if you go to some of the parties, you'll see people dancing with umbrellas, and it's to commemorate and pay homage to that. Where do these parties usually take place? Well, it's something called an arayao, okay? An arayao is a huge tent. Usually they were made out of um, wood and old leaves and things like that back in the day. But since the party has become so big today, you can't fit everybody under a tent made out of foliage. So what you need to look for when you're looking for a Festa Junina party are these little flags and they'll usually have a pole up and the flags will just come down and create like this imaginary tent above your head. So those are the arayals of today because again, the party has exploded and it's so popular that you can't fit everybody under a tent. And these parties are huge, guys. The largest party in the world, because it is celebrated in other places of the world, but the biggest one is in Brazil. It's in Pernambuco, which is a state in the northeast in the city of Caruaru. I found out that in 2011, 1.5 million people attended this party. So it is huge. Wherever you go, though, you will find yourself a Festa Junina party. It's super popular all across Brazil, and people try to keep the same traditions. Some of the parties are a little bit more traditional, family-friendly. Some of them are super mega productions with live bands, even some famous singers and stuff like that. In fact, here are three of the most famous famous and popular Festa Junina parties in Brazil. First, you have Campina Grande in Paraíba. That's a state in the Northeast, a huge party. It's considered one of the largest. And as I mentioned, Caruaru in Pernambuco and Bahia, Salvador, or not Salvador, Bahia, Porto Seguro also has a very, very big party. So those are three of the biggest ones but you can go to a bunch of them all over your town, wherever you are, just Google it and you'll find yourself a Festa Junina party. This year, of course, 2020, as I'm recording this, a little bit tougher because of the quarantine, but in a regular year, 
you would be seeing all of the little flags that I said would be up and different schools usually. A lot of schools like to have Festa Junina parties so they open up their gym gymnasium and they have the little booths up for games and music. And even the social clubs hold some type of events like here in Sao Paulo, the Pinheiro Sports Club has a huge party. Now, sometimes it'll cost you a pretty penny to get into some of these parties, but a lot of them are walk-in, especially if you look for parties that are happening at local schools or churches. What you're going to be paying for is tickets to play all the little games and maybe tickets to buy the food and stuff like that. So a lot of them are free. You can just walk in. But others, especially if they have live bands, famous musicians, etc., etc., you're going to pay 50, 60 or even more reais in order to get in there and enjoy the evening. So now let me get into some of the traditions more specifically that people enjoy during the Festa Junina party. Like I said, it's a country festival. So people dress like they're from the country. Here in Portuguese, they call it caipira. Now some people think that's a pejorative term, caipira. It's kind of like a dumb country person, but I've spoken to enough people from the countryside which are like proud to be caipiras and I like the word. I think it's nice uh, <laughs> to be caipira because I guess, I don't know, I'm a country boy at heart. So as with anything, there's going to be somebody that's going to be offended, but most people are not really offended. They like that their culture has spread throughout Brazil. So people dress like a caipira, plaid shirts. The boys usually put little uh, dots on their face to show freckles. The girls sometimes do too, but I see it more on the boys. Sometimes they'll paint one of their teeth black to show that they're missing a tooth. So yes, it's a little bit of a caricature of Kaipita folks, but that's just part of the tradition down here. People dress like a Kaipitas. They put on some straw hats, jeans. The girls wear these kind of plaid dresses that are really pretty and almost every school has these sort of parties and the little kids all dress up. I remember dressing up like this when I was a little boy here in Brazil before our family moved to the United States. I must have been like five or six years old, but I had a lot of fun with it and I still dress up as you can see in the picture that I have up of myself playing bingo. So that's one of the traditions is people love to play bingo during the Festa Junina and some of these places give out really nice prizes. So check out the bingo game that suits you during Festa Junina. Another thing that people do is square dance, as I mentioned before, probably coming from France, uh, this tradition of square dancing, but obviously with a Brazilian type style of music. Forró is the main music that you're going to hear, and it's made with an accordion, a triangle, pandeiro, which is similar to a tambourine, not exactly, because you actually hit the middle of it, there's like a skin in the middle of it. But some forró is uh, played with guitars and other instruments like a, a little violin or a fiddle, so there's different types of forró music. and. For the kids, they have a bunch of games, like you can do relay races, like they have a one-legged race, which is supposed to pay homage to Ceci Perere, I hope I pronounced that correctly, which is this folkloric creature that lives in the woods. He's like the protector of the Sassi Perere. He is the protector of the forest and he's got only one leg. So the kids do a one-legged race to pay homage to Sassi Perere. And also they have three-legged races. It's very similar to country festivals if you're from America or you have the sack race and things like that. Very, very similar. There's ring tosses, dart throwing. So any of those type of games that you would imagine at a country fair, that's what you have here during the Festa Junina, uh, I think I mentioned fishing in a bucket, I'm not sure, even dowsing for apples, all that stuff you're going to find during the Festa Junina party. 
What are some typical foods that you'll find at Festa Junina parties? Well, one of them is fuba cake. Okay, fuba is made from this really, really finely ground rice and corn. It's delicious. I love it. But not as much as I love corn cake. It's not cornbread, guys. It's corn cake. A little bit different, a little bit sweeter, a little bit uh, more malleable. And it's really good. I love corn cake. Sometimes manjaka cake you'll find too, but it's not like super, super traditional to have manjaka cake. Manjaka is yuca uh, cake. So that's really delicious too, in case you do find it. There's also karau, which I'm not a huge fan of. It's a little too sweet for me, but it's made from corn, condensed milk, peanuts, and cinnamon. And I'm really not a huge fan of peanuts. And there are a few of these treats that are made from peanuts. We also have cocada de colher. Okay, so colher is a spoon and a cocada is the shredded coconut. Again, with condensed milk and butter. So all this stuff is super sweet, guys. So I'm not a super fan of a lot of this type of food. The cakes, not as much, which is probably the reason that I like the cakes more than anything else. But try it. If you like sweets, you'll love it. There's Peji Muleki, which translates to like the foot of a boy, <laughs> of a kid. And it's this hard toffee with peanuts kind of mixed in there. Again, not a huge fan of that. And Pasoka, which are crushed peanuts. Uh, again, not a fan of peanuts. <laughs> so you can tell I'm not eating a lot during Festa Junita, except for those cakes, mm, they are so good. I love those cakes. But there's other food too, guys. Nowadays, everything is mixed, you know, and these parties are so big. So if you go to a Festa Junina party, I'm sure you'll find a little stand that's selling hamburgers or sausages or just a regular old sandwich. So if you don't get into some of the more traditional food, you will not go hungry at any of these parties and finally the most important part of it all is drinks what can you drink during festa junina well like i said you can drink just about anything and you'll find just about anything to drink in all the different stands that they have in the party but the two most popular drinks are king Tong, which loosely translated is like the big warm or the big hot <laughs> because it really does warm you up remember this party is happening here in Brazil during the winter time. So because of that, a lot of these things are made to keep you warm. And King Tong is made with cachaça, ginger, sugar, cloves, and cinnamon. And oh my God, it's so good. It's dangerous though, because it doesn't taste that strong. Okay. Cause usually when you think cachaça, you're like, Oh my God, it's really strong. You know, aguardente. It's like taking a shot of tequila or something, but mixed in with all these different ingredients, you can barely taste the cachaça sometimes. And it's so warm and tasty. It's like you're drinking this warm tea. And then before you know it, you have one and you have two and you have three and you have four and, and you're drunk as you know what. So King Tom is really delicious though. And you have Vinho Quente. Vinho Quente is hot wine, okay? Which is like a mold wine and it's really delicious. You know, a lot of people think, oh my God, hot wine, that's nasty, but it's really tasty too. And sometimes people mix in a little bit of cinnamon, some cloves, they put some ginger in there. There's different ways to make that Vinho Quente. So I'll definitely drop some links in the description of how to make those so that you can enjoy your Festa Junina from home. So it's so sad guys, because this year because of the quarantine, I won't be able to enjoy Festa Junina. It's really my favorite festival down here in Brazil, probably because it's a little bit more laid back. I had my very first major carnival this year. I've been here for 10 years, but I've never really went 100% into carnival and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, but it is so hectic. It is so high powered. It, it takes up a lot of energy. That's just not my style. I'm a lot more laid back. So although I enjoyed it, it's not something that like, oh my God, I can't wait till next year for the next carnival. Whereas Festa Junina is a bit more laid back, very fam family oriented. 
you can just chill, have your quintão, eat some uh, pé de moleque or uh, some corn cake and just chill. But you can also get really drunk and have a lot of fun. So it's, it's right in the middle, which is nice for me. I'm a very middle type person. I like to have my fun, but I also like to be laid back at the same time. You can watch people dancing. You can enjoy the fall hall. And the best thing about it is it lasts throughout the month of, Ju of June and sometimes extends into July. So who knows if the quarantine ends by July, maybe you'll still have time to enjoy some Festa Junina. And when it's in July, sometimes people call it Festa Julina, you know, right? July Fest instead of Junina. So I hope we have a chance to enjoy a little bit of it this year. Well, okay, guys, that's it. This is a short episode of the Brazil Expat Journal explaining a bit about Festa Junina. I hope you really enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that little bell to get notifications of when new episodes will be up. I'll be having a longer version of the BEJ coming next week with Renee. She's a tantric expert here in Brazil. She'll talk about how she came here and how she learned about Tantra. She was a psychotherapist, still is, but she practiced psychotherapy in the United States and then came here. Now she lives in a Buddhist temple. So she lives a totally different lifestyle than most expats down here and I absolutely love it. And we'll talk about dating in Brazil, the differences in the dating culture in Brazil. So listen for that. That'll be up next Friday. And that's it, guys. By the way, next Friday, just so you get the date, will be the 12th. So thanks for listening. I will see you next time.